Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. I am super excited about this earring design because, like, over a decade ago, I designed this earring, but I did not perfect it, and I didn't know how. I realized that it was kind of a really weird but cool design, and I just couldn't figure out how to get it just right. So anyways, I have this jar, I call it my UFO jar, unfinished objects jar, and I put things in there that I get frustrated with or I don't know what to do with, and I used to do that a long time ago before I started YouTube. I haven't done that in forever, but um, I was going through my stuff because I've been uploading videos like every day if you guys haven't noticed. Either a tutorial, a box opening, or I'm talking about organization or something. So anyways, I was going through my stuff, I've been cleaning up, and I found my jar. And I found my deserted earring. And I'm like, it is time to figure this thing out. So I sat down, and I played with it, and I figured out how to perfect it. And I'm so happy I did. So originally, I'll show you guys this one. Um, my, this is my original design. The only thing that I did differently was um, down here I had a seed bead, a four millimeter, and a seed bead. I changed it to six millimeter beads and I also put seed beads in between the beads down here to make this earring flat because it was warping on me and I couldn't get it to lay flat. And I also, um, when I go to tie the knots, I reinforce the sides to make it lay just right. So um, I'm really happy that I figured out how to get it to look like this. It's so pretty. Um, after I made the bugle bead ones, I realized I should try a different kind of bead, and I got these beads here from BB Craft. These are like mother of pearl or rice shaped beads. They're so beautiful. And so I use these on this earring, and it's just so cool. And then after I did these, I remembered that I had in my bead stash rice shaped hematite beads these here. So I ended up doing this one and it's just so cool. I love it so much. So um, I know it's a really weird, unusual design, but um, it looks really cool. And it works up really quickly, believe it or not. This is a very fast earring to make. So let's go ahead and get started. It's going to be a really fun project. I'm going to tell you the list of materials you will need to make one earring. So, if you want to make a pair of earrings, of course you're going to double the materials. And by the way, this also would be awesome as a pendant. So if you want to make a pair of earrings and a pendant, you would triple the materials. Now I will have, down there in the description bar, the materials doubled for you. And by the way, I am using a lot of stuff here from BB Craft, so I'm going to have links to all of the beads that I've used down there below the video in the description bar in case you want to go and check it out for yourself. And um really why I'm telling you the materials you will need to make one earring is so that you count your beads out and um, you don't have any problems as you make this because I've realized that sometimes when you're making like a pair of earrings it's best to have the beads uh, counted out for just that one that you're working on so you don't have any mistakes. Okay so for the list of materials you're going to need eight pound monofilament and you will need to cut two feet to make one earring and of course if you're making a pair of earrings you will need to cut two two foot pieces. You're going to need a center bead and I like to use a six by eight millimeter rondelle for the center but if you don't have rondelles I have also found that just a six millimeter round bead will work but you will have an empty space below the bead there where there's a gap so that's why I'm using the six by eight millimeter rondelle. You will also need six six millimeter bicones, four four millimeter bicones, 14 6 or 7 millimeter bugle beads or this rife shaped bead, so 6 or 7 millimeter, both sizes work. I think that my rife shaped beads are actually 6 millimeter and my bugles are 7. You will also need 11 o seed beads, and I'm using Miyuki. I've used Miyuki in these two here and this one. And this one here, I actually used an off brand, and because I did, the seed beads were bigger, I didn't have to use as many. So looking here at the bottom, you could see that I have one seed bead between all of my 
six millimeter bicones, but on um, I'll show you this one because you haven't seen this one up close. Uh, this one here I used Miyuki, and they were thinner, smaller seed beads, so I had to do two. So you'll ha you'll see when you make this if you have to use one or two depending on what brand of bead you're using. And you're also going to need earring findings, and I am using stainless steel lever backs for this one, and you can get these also at BB Craft. And all the lever backs I use those uh, on, on these here are um antique brass and I got these from BB Craft and the turquoise rondelles are from BB Craft almost everything I used to make these are from BB Craft like I said I will leave links for you guys down there and I will also give you a coupon code so you can save money in case you're interested in making an order so let's go ahead and make these I colored the ends of my monofilament with permanent marker and nail polish does work better for staying on the monofilament, but it makes it thicker and it makes it hard to pass through. So um, I'm going to start by picking up a seed bead, a rice shaped bead, okay, and because this um, is 8 pound monofilament, it's not as stiff as 10, so uh, it tends, my beads tend to fall off. Okay, and after the, uh, when I pick them up, because it's, you know, it's not strong. I'm picking up a 6 millimeter bicone and then a rice shaped bead, sliding it down. I'm going to crisscross through this bead. Bring my ends together, make sure they are even. It seems so crazy that this earring is made with just two feet of monofilament. Isn't that crazy? There's only been like a couple of projects in my life that I have designed that is only need two feet. Okay, after this, I'm going to pick up, see how I have a bicone on my right side and on my left side I have a seed bead. I have to um, pick up a total of five of these on the right and a total of, I think it's five, seed beads on the left. So on, you know what, I need to swap because my bicones are over here and my seed beads over here. Yeah, that just makes more sense, doesn't it? Okay, so on this side I got my bicone and on my right side I have my seed bead and then I'm going to pick up this rice bead I'm going to slide it down and I'm going to crisscross through the rice bead bring this bead down I now have this. On the right side, I'm going to pick up one seed bead. On the left side, I'm going to pick up a bicone, slide them both down. I'm going to pick up my rice bead and crisscross through this. Okay, so see. Having larger beads on one side is making this curve for us. So I have to keep going. I have to do this two more times. On this side, I have my seed bead. And on this side, I have my bicone. And then my rice shaped bead. Crisscross through this bead. Bring it down. Just like this. Again, on the right, I'm going to pick up one seed bead. And on the left, I'm going to pick up a bicone. And then I'm going to pick up a rice bead here and crisscross through this. Okay, so now I have five bicones on the bottom and five seed beads on the top. Now what I'm going to do, I have to take the string that's on the inside. So see this one's here on the outside. This one's on the inside, right in the middle. I'm going to take this string. I'm going to pick up one seed bead. And then I'm going to pick up my center bead. This is my favorite part. I like putting the middle bead in for some reason. I, I don't know why. And then another seed bead, just like this. Slide that down pass through this one right here. Okay. So pull both strings and you have this. 
You want to make sure that your seed beads that you just added are sitting like this because sometimes, I don't know why, but this seed bead here will turn weird. That one will too. And it will not let these sit in place. So it's important to make sure that it looks just like mine. Okay? Now what I'm going to do, I'm totally losing my Sharpie. It drives me crazy. Now what I have to do is I have to pick up one seed bead on each string. Okay? And then a rice bead, or bugle, whatever you're using. Another rice on this side. Okay. A seed bead on each side. Let that fall. A rice on each side. A seed bead again on each side. A rice on each side. Let that fall. And a seed bead. And cross of the seed bead. Okay. Now we have what looks like this. Kind of looks like a little purse. Oh my gosh, it looks like a purse. I didn't realize that till now. Man, I could totally change this more and make it more purse like. This is so cool. Okay. There's a brain fart right there. Um, I'm crossing through the bead right here at the top, and now I have to add my earring finding. So to do that, I'm going to pick up two seed beads, my earring finding, two seed beads, just like this. I'm going to take my other string and pass through these beads right here. Okay, in the earring finding, just like this. Pull this down. Okay, I want to go just like this. I'm going to go to this side, and I'm going to pass this string through my first rice bead. Just the rice bead, okay? Not through the seed bead that's after the rice. Okay, pull this tight so you have no slack in here and in here. It's okay that there's slack here. There's slack here because we haven't put this one through the bead yet. So now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'll flip this over so I can get through these layer. And I'm going to pass through this bead here. Okay. Like that. Both tight. So we now have this. Now what I have to do is pick up one seed bead on each string, slide them down, pick up my six millimeter bicone, and crisscross my ends through this bead. Okay just like this. Then I'm going to pick up a seed bead on each side, a bicone on each side, pick up a seed bead and cross through this. Make sure you're pulling it tight as you go. If, if, if it's loose in here on the sides and on this side, which I had this problem earlier, you want to take this back out and you want to get like a bead all and open up this seed bead bale that you made and um, pull your strings and tighten it up. Okay, so I have this right now. It's coming along. It's looking really pretty. I'm going to put a bicone on each string now. Okay, and then I'm going to put a seed bead on each string. slide them down. I'm going to take my string and pass through this rondelle. There's one side. Now I'm going to take the other side and pass through the same rondelle but in the opposite direction.
Come on. There we go. Okay. Just like this. I'm going to take this string and go through this seed bead here. Flip this over. Actually, I can't because my string's on this side. I'm going to take and pass through this seed bead. Okay, so now string out of there, string out of there. I'm going to pull this tight, pull this side tight. This spot here sometimes I have found to be a little tricky trying to get the tension just right on it. This seed bead needs to actually go up here. Yeah, so it's actually best to hold the center bead like this and pull these two like that. There we go. That's perfect. Okay, now I'm going to take a rice bead or bugle, whatever you're using. Slide that down. Right here, I have to pass through the seed bead. In order to do that, it's easier if you pinch the side of your earring so that bead pops out and then you can go through it. Okay. And then I'm going to take my string and pass through this rice bead. And then I'm going to go through this seed bead. Pull it tight. Take my other string, do the same thing, picking up my rice bead. I'm going to bend this side here so I can go down through the seed bead. Okay, and then I have to go through the rice bead. I also have to pass through this next seed bead. Flip this over. Am I going through that bead? Yes. Okay. So now we have just the seed beads left to do. And then we're going to tie knots. Now, here's the thing. You will have to figure out if you need one or two seed beads in each hole. Um, these Miyukis that I used here are really thin. They're kind of like Czech seed beads. And that's why I got two down here in each hole. But these ones here is an off name brand. I think they're actually from Walmart. Don't tell anybody. But I buy Walmart seed beads sometimes, okay? Don't tell anybody. Anyways, um, even though they say they're 11 0 seed beads at Walmart, they're actually not. They're bigger. I think they're 9 0s. They're bigger than 10s. I swear they are. And um, look, look how big they are. Here, I'll show you. Look at the size difference. I got two in here. And I'm actually wondering if I could put two millimeter rondelles, because I have two millimeter rondelles in between at the bottom because they're sparkly. I've been getting those a lot lately in the subscription boxes, but um, I stayed with the seed beads because I did seed beads with the other ones. So right now, I'm coming out of here. I have to pick up a seed bead, and I'm going to purposefully try to pick out the thin ones so that they fit just right. Okay, I went through that bicone. Now I have to pick up two. And then I'm going to pass through the next bicone. My red marker has totally come off. I'm going to pick up two again. See, I need the thin ones. That one's thin. And I'm going to pass through this middle bead. I'm going to go to this side. I'm going to pick up one seed bead, pass through this bicone, and then two. That seed bead, I swear, is going to break. Looks like there's a bubble in it. Have you guys ever seen that? There'll be a little hole on the side of the seed bead, and which, what's actually going on is there's an air bubble that's through the side of the seed bead, and um, that seed bead will actually end up breaking. I've had that happen to me a lot. So I try to avoid those seed beads. It's, it's more noticeable in transparent seed beads, but seed beads that are opaque, you, you'll just see like a little hole in the side. Be weary of those beads. 
throw them away. I know it's hard to throw beads away, but if there's an air pocket in it, it's going to break. And then you'll have to fix it. Okay, so pull it tight. There we go. So pretty. I am going to put these beads away, and then we're going to tie this off. I'm going to show you how to finish this earring, and it's very important that you do it the same exact way that I'm about to show you, because if you don't, you will have problems, and um, this was the big problem that I had over a decade ago of why I couldn't finish the earring, and I figured out how to fix it, so uh, now I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So after you exit out of the bicone, you want to take your strings and go through the two seed beads on each side. So I like to bend my earring, okay, and get through these two beads, and you get you gotta really bend it to get through there, okay. There's one side, I'm gonna bend this side now and get my string through here, okay. I'm gonna pull both of these strings tight and um, before we tie knots, for some reason, I found that if you go like this and you pull the earring, it makes all the beads pop right into place and it makes this so much easier. So pulling this tight, okay, I'm going to take my string and I'm going to pass under these two seed beads. If you look, there is a triangle of string. One string's going this way, one's going this way, and then there's one that the seed beads are on. So I'm going to take my string and I'm going to go through the triangle, just like this, okay. I'm going to pass through this loop two times. You know, it makes no sense that the dog wants in the room and then I let it in the room and then it wants back out. It makes no sense. Alright, pull this knot down, just like that. I'm going to take and pull this string away and pass through the bicone. I might have to bend this in order to get it through. Let's see. There we go. Okay, just like that. And when you pull this string, it's gonna the knot is gonna pop inside the bicone. So now I'm gonna tell you what to do because it's pretty simple. Um, I'm coming out right here. I'm gonna take my string and go through these two seed beads. I'm gonna tie another knot right here in front of this bicone. Okay. Then I'm gonna pass the string through this bicone and pop that knot right into this bead. Then I'm gonna take the remainder of my string and I'm going to pass through these two seed beads, this rice bead, this seed bead, this bead, this bead, this bead, passing all the way through here. I'm gonna exit out the rice bead, okay? And then I'm gonna stop, leave that string there. You wanna flip this over, tie a knot right in front of this bicone, pass through this bead, pull the knot through, pass through these two, tie a knot here, hide the knot in this bead, and then same thing, pass your string through all these beads here. So you're actually only having two knots, um, one here and one there, and that's fine. And Actually there's four knots, uh, a knot here and a knot there. And um, when you pass your strings through these two sides here, you want to pull both of them very tight and then trim them and you'll be all done. And it's very important that you do this because I realized having two strings passing through this side and this side really makes this um, have a better shape. So I am wondering if this were to be done with Fireline, would we get the same results? I don't know. So um, if you make this with Fireline, please leave a comment down there letting us know. If you tried it, I will highlight your comment, which means that it'll bring it all the way up to the top so everybody will see it and we'll all know if Fireline works for this design or not. So this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is such a cool earring. I really enjoyed making it. I love it with the hematite and the um, mother of pearl beads. And again, these mother of pearl beads I got from BB Craft. I will link them below. And these blue beads here are actually Alexanderite and I didn't realize that until I started working with them. And here are the other ones. I love the teal. These teal bicones I also got from BB Craft. They're so pretty. These here are gorgeous too. I love the orange in these and the turquoise and that dark purple. So pretty. This is a really fun project. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Make sure you click the bell button so you get notified when I upload new videos. And check me out on my social media sites. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Thanks for watching.